so that's how i competed it's only when i when i failed i realized oh my god i have been a speaker all my life i used to take part in speech contests in my school and college days how is it possible that this particular toastmaster defeated me so you know <laughs> my ego got hurt there i was like no 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 it's not possible <laughs> let me try one more time and see Hello Nisha how are you Hey Patricia it's nice to see you after the convention here I'm so excited to have you in the break time with Patty show same yeah. here yeah. dear friends Nisha and I just as Nisha mentioned it just had the pleasure to meet in the Bahamas this past August 2023 Let me tell you a little bit about who Nisha Shivram is She is a master communicator <laughs> yeah she is <laughs> She is a public speaking coach and a keynote speaker. She has been a Toastmasters member since 2007, is that correct? And she's been competing in the international speech contest since 2012. And imagine that? She made it to the podium as the runner-up champion, world champion speaker this year in 2023. Woo! <laughs> she is also the founder of Wabi Sabi. an e-commerce platform to sell upcycled products and the founder of SpeechZ app a speakers management and educational events company that's being worked on right now number 3 she is a woman on a mission she is a transformation and empowerment speaker and her prime focus is to change the mindset of young students teenagers and women from problem based to solution based mindset through the workshops and keynote sessions that she provides. Last but not least, she is a wife and the mother of two very bright and energetic young children of 4 and 6 years old. <laughs> I know how you do all this. Wonderful. I've talked enough. Let's get started. And I'll wait to hear more about you. <laughs> uh, can you tell us a little bit more about Nisha as a young girl and a teenager? What was it like to be in her shoes, please? Oh okay now when you ask me this question you have already taken me back to my childhood mm -hmm. i grew up in a very small town in india when i say small everybody knew everyone yeah. so something happens in my house everybody would know about it um and um, we had one school one english medium school at a very walkable distance and i was raised by my mother my father i lost my father when i was 8 years old so it it was me and my younger brother and um, my mother who was a housewife until then but after my father's uh, sudden demise she has to start working mm. now my school life was the most interesting one because um, i was a very popular student Yeah. not because i was good at studies but i was very mischievous <laughs> so i used to do all sorts of you know naughty things in my school um eating um lunch boxes and um what is it cutting people's bags you know hiding their uh, school books and everything so i was very naughty at the same time i used to take part in all these extracurricular activities so i was very active in taking part in speech contests debates and poem recitation so i was everybody knew me well and um, yeah that was and i was a rebel but you know when it came when i was in a I was in my teens I was a rebel and I never used to listen to my mom but now I realize I my mother always used to tell me that one day when you will get a daughter you would realize that how much you have hurt us or how much we have tolerated you but now I'm realizing it I have a daughter who is exact replica of me so I I know how difficult it is <laughs> so yeah wow yes we we end up getting back and same thing happened to me with my daughter so Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have the grace and the patience because my I put my mother through this. Uh -huh. So your mother was a very strong lady to take over like this um my mother yes indeed and a very strict one. So she was very particular about our studies and everything but yes very very strong lady because it was it was in those times was very difficult to raise two kids mm -hmm. um in a, in a state where 
the language was different she was not from that particular state or town where we grew up so the language was different she didn't know the language but she learned it she you know upgraded her skills and she got a job and yeah it was difficult so she was in the very very strong yeah wow that's admirable <laughs> great well a strong woman like you would not come from a woman who's not strong herself so yes. and okay so you seem to not be a shy child you were as you said um <laughs> very energetic and yeah no problem being yes. mischievous, uh, mischievous. But what was the turning point that made you decide to go visit a public speaking club for the first time then when you became an adult? Uh, okay. Um, I knew about Toastmasters because uh, when I was in school, we used to get these magazines known as Competition Success Review. So it was basically for those who were preparing for some competitive exams. So they would have articles on, on, on various topics. And that is how I came to know about Toastmasters International. But at that time, it did not um, attract me, I can say. I said, oh, okay, there is an organization that does all these things. So when I came to Qatar, and I was sitting in my office, uh, one of my friends came and said, you know what, last uh, night I attended a club meeting. So when she said club, I thought some disco club because she's <laughs> into discos and all this stuff. So I didn't pay much attention. And then she said, you know, people were speaking and it is some public speaking club. So I jumped. I said, which club you said? And she said, some public speaking club. I said, okay. Uh, and she was not interested in, in, in going again. So I said, okay, don't worry. I want to go. So just let me know who should I contact. And, you know, and that is how I came in contact with the VP membership. And I attended that club meeting. And that was the 100th meeting of the club. Mm -hmm. So they invited me as a guest. Okay. I went there and I said, yes, this is my place. So I should, you know, go and continue. And that is how I... Uh, started attending the club meetings became a member and started giving my because public speaking was always my passion I loved to uh, to speak and I loved talking so that was the perfect place for me yeah <laughs> wow so that was in 2007 2007 August yeah wow and that's fascinating I think you're the most um, comfortable person speaking as a young person because most of the other world champions I've interviewed they they were always shy. Most of them, they were shy and they were uncomfortable. That they were stutterers, like Mohammed Katani, for instance. So it's uh, very fascinating to hear that you were actually. No, no, I love talking. I love talking, and I had I have worked with radio also. I I joined radio to become an RJ, but you know when they saw that I have got a lot of connections here in Qatar, they say, okay, put Nisha in corporate communications. She can handle. She can you know talk to people and get a uh, get us more business but that didn't work actually because my love was into talking and uh, communicating and all those things so yes I, I love that I love doing it and that is why I loved that you know that interview part with Mark Brown after the contest I just loved it I just wanted to sit there and talk and talk and talk yeah yeah it, it was really fun I was in the audience when uh, that happened actually I saw the whole thing and you were really good. And I'm telling you, when you were saying, I'm going to compete again and again and again, we were like on my, uh, I was on my seat and you really motivated me to, okay, just get a speech together, woman. <laughs> you need to try to do it again and again. Yes. It's, uh, you're so inspiring, Nisha. Ooh. Thank you. And speaking of that, actually, what made you decide to start competing? Um, I, I just competed. I, I was not, uh, you know, into this world championship thing. Um, I did not know about the world championship to be to be very honest so in 2012 before that even in 2011 you know in, in, in clubs they would just push you to compete right just go ahead and compete we, we don't have contestants so just go ahead and compete so that's how I competed it's only when I when I failed I realized, oh my God, I have been a speaker all my life. I used to take part in speech contests in my school and college days. How is it possible that this particular Toastmaster defeated me? So, you know, <laughs> my ego got hurt there. I was like, no, 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 no. It's not possible. <laughs> Let me try one more time and see. Yeah, and that is how I started competing again and again. So every time I failed, and I have failed, you know, more eight years continuously for eight long years before I won my district contest for the very first time. 
So every time I failed, I asked this question to me, how, Nisha, how is it possible? Okay, try again. Let's see. So yeah, that's how, that's how it happened. <laughs> yes, I can completely relate to this. And wow, because a lot of people who even made it to make it to the podium, they figure, wow. I made it to the podium now. I'm number one and number two. Well, not number one because you can never compete twice as a champion. But number two, number three, they stopped because they figured, imagine how humiliating it would be if I get eliminated at the club level or the division level or whatever, right? So the ego yeah. is something. So I love that you keep showing up. And <laughs> for me, they're not failures. I, I know you're saying this because, uh, yeah, you know, but I mean, it's a win. Yeah, you're the second you know, second best champion in the world. At the end of the day, it's a question of points. And I cannot wait to see you again because every time you compete, I just love it so much. Uh, I did not even know you in Tennessee, but I love that. I was watching your, your, I was in the room when you were delivering that beautiful message. It was about the washing machine, correct? Yes. The noise, yes. So that message, I was laughing. I was on my, I was on the floor the entire time, but it was such an impactful message. So you're really good at what you do. So I'm happy you keep coming back. Every time and I cannot wait to see what you'll be doing next year. <laughs> if yeah, yeah, that's that's what you know. I was I was um I was also we we were having a discussion here after I came back and I said and somebody said okay Nisha it was so un unfortunate that you got second. I said no I'm lucky because next year I have an opportunity to go back again right <laughs> the world champion will never have that opportunity now Ti will sponsor my tickets yeah is it not yeah, yeah and I can fly and go yeah so. Let's yes. look at it that way. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell us uh, about the few months and weeks leading up to the championship? Like, how did you get prepared and who helped you with your speeches? Uh, see, for me, uh, and I have always uh, mentioned this during my workshops also, I always give this example of Usain Bold. You know, that uh, guy, he actually practiced for four long years just to run that nine or ten seconds. And that is how we should do. It's not that, you know, you have a contest in December and you are start, you have started preparing just one week, week before your contest. And I have seen contestants doing that. Just two days before the contest, they will come back, you know, come to me with the speech and say that, please modify it, please do something, please make me win. It's not possible that way. So what I do is the moment my contest finishes and for the past three years, the moment my semifinals or finals have finished, I have started preparing for the next contest. Mm -hmm. So, the, the you know, that uh, I have already written the speech. It is with my mentor. We are working on it. So the process goes on and every at every level, after getting the feedback from the people, we keep on working on it. So it's a continuous working process. Now, this year, I have a mentor who has been with me for the last 12 13 years he has been you know helping me with structuring the speech and putting all the ideas together in a proper format and everything but this year in particular uh, i had taken help from lance miller for my speech mm -hmm. world champion yes so he was the one who had helped me with the swipe thing mm -hmm. in in my speech and um, it, he has been great help you know, a nice gentleman, a kind man, and he has helped me a lot. Yeah. So, and this is for everybody who is planning to take part in the contest that it's just not a one week or a one month process. You have to start. I mean, by now your speech should be ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I'm going to start writing my speech after we hang up. But yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. You're absolutely right. And Les Miller is a fantastic human. I actually interviewed him. The interview is right here if you'd like to go watch. Okay. And um, wonderful. Okay. So speaking of your speeches, let's talk about your semifinal speech, The Race, for a minute. Yeah. If you allow. Okay. It was so hilarious and memorable. I'm telling you, everything you've ever done has been memorable to me. Uh, from the moment you opened your mouth, I'm like, oh, I need to hear what's coming next. <laughs> Let's talk about your semifinal speech, the race for a minute. It was okay. so good. Um, dear friend, please, if you have not watched it yet, go uh, take a look. Uh, I will we'll be putting the, uh, the link in the description below. Uh, Nisha, can you share with us how um, did you find your story? Or how do you usually find your stories? And what motivates you to share these inspiring messages with your audiences, please? Uh, when I had started competing, I always thought that, you know, the topic should be, should be grand. 
you know something that is that would make the people or that would just simply shatter their thought process it should be something grand it is only after eight long years i realized that we can have simple topics and we can create a bigger message out of it and that is when i started looking for message uh, for topics just you know i started looking around me to find topics and uh, these days that is how i find my topics simple day to day stuff you know something that my kid might have said something that my husband might have done something happened at home or you know while you are stuck at the traffic small small things so if you focus you will find that every moment of your life ultimately turns into a story every moment okay so tomorrow when i would tell somebody about this podcast it's a story for me now i have to see what did i learn from this podcast or what did i learn from this interaction and that would ultimately become the message of my speech so that is how i have started thinking now it took me a long time to do that but uh, you know and i realized that it is so helpful because people they do not expect you to come with such simple topics and such a big message for example the washing machine the washing machine just broke down and when you actually look at it you know there is a message in that now i will tell you one more thing while coming back from the bahamas i got stuck in miami my connecting flight i missed my connecting flight mm -hmm. so i was thinking and that was my first time in miami i i didn't know anything and i had the entire day like 9 to 10 hours at the airport so i thought what should i do and then i asked my friend i i sent him a message and he said that miami is such a beautiful place nisha why don't you just go out and you know roam around and i was scared i said i don't know anybody in miami how would i go he said no problem just go you just take the metro ticket and just go so i went out of the airport and i was trembling i was i i was not confident and i was sitting there on the bench waiting for the metro bus and there was a lady next to me she was sitting next to me and she also had her bag and everything in her hand so i told her that this must this is my first time in miami so she said this is my first time too i said okay fine i have a company so and then we shared our stories and that is when she said and i said i'm going to miami beach and then i will come back to the airport and leave to qatar so where are you going i asked her and she was like i don't know because she had left everything like everything and she had come to miami looking for a job and she had just few some money in her account and she knows nobody in miami and she was going to the south beach to stay there and find a job so what she said was she was taking a leap of faith so i thought my god i have money i have people right you know in the phone i can contact she had no contacts actually she had she had left her abusive husband and she was all set to start a new life so i said if she can do that she can take a leap of faith what am i doing right so see if you look at it there is a message there is i can simply turn this story into a speech so now we have to for everybody who actually uh, finds it very difficult to find a topic you don't have to look anywhere just look around just look around and you will definitely definitely find a story and a beautiful message in that mm, yeah. that's how i do it is so and it sounds so simple nisha that you're right we don't have to go and trip yeah. and break our leg in the himalayas and right. <laughs> have yeah. a, it, yes it's simple you're right in the everyday some people have recommended that you should just write story worthy like i'm was reading this book from matthew dick story worthy uh -huh. it's just a really good okay. book and he yeah. recommends every day at the end of the day write down a story worthy moment and then you Correct. end up having a whole catalog and you can always go back to that so right yes <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's just go Let's just come back to the Bahamas there. So can you tell us what your first reaction was? I was like in one a few rows behind you. Uh, what, what was your first reaction when you found out that you made it to the final round after being 35,000 some contestants? Uh, to be very honest, and I, I'll just share this honestly, mm -hmm. you know, um, when we were in the, uh, when they had called us to check the stage, you know the audio check and everything i was sitting there and i was looking at all these contestants and i was wondering whether i would be able to make it or not because they all looked good right mm -hmm. 
but when I spoke, when I finished speaking, I knew that I will be there in the finals. I had no doubt. Oh. I knew it, you know, and I knew that Mariam would be there. I, I, I sincerely knew that she would be there and I knew that I would be there. Mm. So, so it was not that, you know, it was not for me, it was not unexpected kind of a thing. Um, so I, I can't say that I was excited. I was thrilled. No, I knew it. So my reaction was also very subtle. So I, I was like, ah, okay, something happened as I expected. So uh, that was my reaction. Thank you. I said, thank you, because it was another opportunity for me to go and perform and do better than what I did last year. So that's it. Oh. Yes, I was so happy. Yeah. It was beautiful to see that. So beautiful. Okay. About your <laughs> final speech, swipe, swipe. Sorry. Okay. Friend, my dear friend. <laughs> now you've seen the race. You should also go see swipe. So the link is here and also it's in the description below. Do yourself a favor. Take the seven minutes to go watch it, please. Aisha. <laughs> yes. So when you left the stage after delivering that speech, what went through your mind? Um, what were your feelings? Because it was the first time for you to make it into the top eight. Did you think you might have a chance to win the title at that moment? Uh, Patricia, it was my second time in the finals. The finals? Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought it was a... Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the second time in your finals. Thank you for correcting me. Yeah. Yes. Um. Again... Like everybody, I also hoped that I would make it or probably I would win the title. So that was the thing that was going on in my mind. And um, when the result was announced, the only thing I said to myself again, which means I have to come back again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Yeah. When the speech got over, I was just thinking that, okay, finally it go got over. But I was worried about the results because all the eight contestants were good yeah. brilliant mm -hmm. you know i i some of the speeches i just loved them yeah. but uh, i think two speeches which i heard which i could listen but i could not watch because i was arranging my mic and everything so i could not watch how they performed on the stage but if i could just listen and say wow great content mm -hmm. oh my god the kind of words they are using nisha what are you going to do so they all were brilliant so i'm just i was just hoping that you know i would make it um to the top but uh it's okay fine no problem uh next year is another opportunity for me yeah. yes so. it is yes and they were really solid contestants i have to say yeah it, it was extraordinary <laughs> so, and so the, at this point now, so you on the second place, which is huge. It's huge. Some people, I think, I, I think Mike Carr, like 25 years he competed and, you know, only once he made it to, to, to the end, right? So it's mm. just uh, after 13 years, you can look at it that way. You've already made it many times on the, on the world stage, which is a huge opportunity. So, and you know that not yeah. everybody gets to do that. So many people compete and never make it to even the semifinals, right? When you won the second place, so it was the second time in history that there were an all-female top three winners of the World Championship of Public Speaking. Um, can you, would you, I don't know, how did that, did it feel any particular way to be only with women up there, which is very unusual. Usually it's mainly men who are dominating in their... Uh, at that point, I did not realize it. Yeah. I knew that in 2018, there were three ladies who won. But at that point, it didn't come to my mind. It's only after when I took the trophy and I got down, uh, Sherry Sue, yes. you know her, right? Yes, she came and said, Nisha, yay! Back then we were three ladies and this, that is when I said, oh my God, I'm I, I'm just, you know, I just recreated history. Yes. So it's a huge, huge thing. And I remember in my Facebook in 2018, I had actually posted the, 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 the photo of these three ladies saying that, wow, we have got three women champions this year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, my God, after five years, I'm part of recreating that history. So it was something huge for me, even more than winning the second place title, mm -hmm. right? So it was huge. It was it was just some moment, you know, you say that it was a moment for me. Yeah. And all the little girls and the little Nisha daughters or my daughters, they can look at it and say, oh, my God, they did it. I can do it again. In any field, yes. doesn't have to be only public speaking. Like we can actually show up and just 
uh, slay True. the stage. <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh, what advice can you share with Toastmasters contestants to help them on their journey to become world champion of public speaking? Like something you wish someone would have told you when you first decided to start competing. Yeah, when I first decided to compete, um, when they saw me competing again and again, mm -hmm. uh, they looked at me and said, see, it is very difficult for an Indian to stand there because of because maybe because of our accent or the slang or the mother tongue influence that we have you know with our language and it is with everybody every nationality they have their own way of uh, speaking english because english is not our native language so the first thing that people said that you know it 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 is not possible for you nisha uh, because because you are an indian second again female back in those days there were only male champions so that is the first thing that people told me. Second thing was, you have responsibilities. You are a mother. Why don't you just sit at home and take care of your kids? Why do you have to compete again and again, travel all the way from Qatar to different countries and competing and losing and coming back, mm -hmm. right? So these are the things. And then third thing was, oh my God, you have such complicated topics as speeches, you know, your language is complicated and all those things. So I have I have heard everything. My friends have made fun of me saying that it's not your cup of tea. Just leave it, leave it, leave it. The more they said it, the more I tried because, you know, it made me angry. And I was like, why? Why can't I do it? It is only when Mohammed Khatani won from, from the Middle East. He was the very first person to win from the Middle East. And uh, Manoj Vasudevan, uh, who's the world champion, and he is from an Indian origin. I said, if these people can make it, why can't I? Mm -hmm. You know, what is wrong with me? <laughs> right? So I said, no problem. I'll try. It's my money, my time. My husband is taking care of me and he is okay with it. I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, compete. So, and, and you know what, after, a, after some time, I have, I just stopped talking to those people. I said, okay, they can't see what I'm seeing for myself. Their vision is different. My vision is different. Okay. So if they can't see what I'm seeing for myself, okay, let them go from my life. It's okay. Fine. I can adjust. So that's it. Oh, I love that so much. Yes. People who are not in alignment with you. We're just trying right. to stop you from living your dream. What is it changing their life? They're not paying your uh, your plane ticket or taking care of your kids while you're gone. So what do they have yeah. to say? Yeah. And now when I have won, they all have come back. I was and I I would like where were you when I was struggling? You know when I actually needed, and now you all have come back. So I'm so sorry. I'm not taking you in. <laughs> yes, no room for you. <laughs> No, no room for negativity. Yes. It's very important to be very protective of our space. And really, that's what I love with Toastmasters organization is that it's such um, an empowering, inspiring group of people, you know, who just want, and we're prepared to be uncomfortable, prepared to, we're prepared to grow and help each other out. And there, there are a lot of people out there in the world who want to help people. So all yeah. the ones who are trying to bring you down or keep you where you are, those are the people who I meet who I had to cut off a few people. Because it don't, they, they're just not aligned with where I'm trying to go. So if you cannot go where I'm going or, you know, you it was they came into our, my life for a reason. Everybody, you know, but then at one point it's like, it's okay to just say goodbye. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. So, okay. So now you've been competing for 13 years. You're going to keep doing it until you, you know, you decide to start to stop doing for for whatever reason. Can you share like your best lessons learned from this convention? Uh, see, last year when I was in Tennessee, I was the first contestant in the finals. Yes. And um, obviously it was my first time. So the, that nervousness was there. Mm -hmm. And my speech was had a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And I felt that after the speech, I felt that it was not required. That kind of energy was not required. So this year I was I was very calm. You know, I was I was not in under stress. But one thing that I realized this year that uh, to uh, interact with your audience more, you need more humor. Mm. That is one thing that you need to have in your speech to connect with the audience more. So my speech had humor, but not, you know, as compared to like how Jocelyn had or, 
you know, there, there were many other contestants who had humor, enough humor in their speeches. So my, uh, my speech was somewhere between a bit of humorous and a bit of emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. So that is what I, that is one lesson that I, re, uh, you know, learned that you need to have a lot of humor to get, keep on getting the attention of your audience and uh, keep them hooked to your uh, story and to your speech until the end. So that is one lesson that I have le learned. And uh, one lesson, and I would like to tell this to everybody who's taking part in the contest from the very beginning, what I have learned, and this is, I learned it in the very beginning itself, that you should never, ever underestimate your fellow contestants. You might be a champion speaker. And uh, I tell this to everybody who take part in the contest here, whenever they call me for the workshop, you might be competing with me or I might be competing with somebody who is just a beginner. But I should never, ever underestimate thinking that, oh, my God, I'm the second place winner of this world championship. So I don't have to prepare much because I know everything. Now, that is where you're going to go down. Because you don't know how the other person is working and how much hard they are working and it is you know you now you have a huge responsibility to do better every single time people are expecting from you you can't go down so never ever underestimate anybody never ever overestimate yourself mm. so these this is this is one lesson that i would like to share with all the future contestants wow i love that oh so true so so true <laughs> If there is someone watching us right now, like a struggling mother or a discord student, a depressed employee who feels like throwing in the towel, what would you like to tell them, Nisha? See, life will always have challenges, okay? We will always have struggles. And what is a life without struggles? If you just want to live a life with all the comforts and with no pains, you're not going to gain anything out of life. You need challenges to grow. So if there is uh, somebody who's, who's a struggling mother, the struggles are there to teach you. It's, it's not there to, you know, to, to make you weak. It's, it is there to make you stronger. But you have to change your perspective. If you look at a challenge and, you know, you think that, oh my God, how am I going to do this? How am I going to overcome this particular challenge? Or... What will I do? Then you're gone. You have to look at the challenge and say, okay, the challenge is there. Let me sit down, write it down and see how can I overcome it? What are the options do I have at that particular point of time? And then you look at various options and try to find the best possible alternative that you can have to overcome it. And let me tell you, once you start looking at your problems and challenges in that way, you will suddenly start realizing that, you know, from nowhere, people would come in your life to help you out. Mm. It has happened with me. Mm -hmm. And you should not be surprised. The help will come from people who you don't know. Mm. Pure strangers. Mm -hmm. People who are close to you would just say that, oh my God, this is a challenging situation. And they will, they will you know, add on to your stress. Mm -hmm. But somebody who don't know you who would, would come and help you. So always look at a challenge and don't look at a, at a challenge as a challenge. Look at it, sit there, write it down. When you write things down, half of your problem is gone. Mm. So write it down and then you write down the options that you have to overcome that challenge and find the best one to, to overcome that. That is how you have to look at it. And that is what my mother has taught me. Because as I said, it was not easy to raise two little kids in a, in a land where, you know, she didn't know anybody. But she did that. And she waited three long years to get a job. Mm -hmm. She did not have a, have, a, have a government job. So she waited for three long years. But in that, in those three long years, she upgraded her skills. She learned the language. She did everything. Mm -hmm. to make her you know capable enough to go and do the job mm -hmm. so struggles will always be there and i say that struggles must be there mm -hmm. otherwise we will never grow Ooh, so true and we'll never appreciate uh, the happy moments or the good things that we are mm -hmm. blessings we will not because we'll just take it for granted yeah wow thank you for sharing that Nisha, that's so, Thank you. that's so inspiring. <laughs>
So you're a very, very busy leader, lady, Nisha. And how do you reconcile being a speaker, a speaker, a coach, a founder, a wife, and a mother while maintaining your mental sanity? Like, how do you manage to stay grounded? <laughs> See, I'm a Taurian. I'm a. I was born in April, so I'm a bull, and bull are <laughs> bull are known to be grounded, right? Uh, so. But uh, I follow a schedule. As I said, you know, I get up uh, at 4 a.m. And uh, people look at me and they think, oh, my God, two little kids. How is she managing? She prepares for the contest. She travels and all those things. But they don't know that in my mind it is just going on. Okay, so 4 a.m. I have to get up and do my exercise. Five by five, I will be ready. Breakfast would be ready. Now, my kids are homeschooled. They don't go to the local schools here. I teach them at uh, home. So... The classes will be only for four hours, but they're okay, fine. So that is done. By 11, I'm free. So I do all my stuff from 11 to 2. Then, you know, I, I attend interviews. <laughs> and then evening is my class. So I have a timetable and I follow that. Mm -hmm. And I make sure that the things that I have to do on that particular day is, is finished on that particular day. Wow. But at times I get lazy, mm -hmm. but finally my jobs will be done. It's, it's never that, you know, you would call me and I would say, oh, Patricia, you gave me this assignment and it's not ready. It will be ready. So that is that is one quality that I have. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, that is why it is uh, possible for me to manage. And I have a very supportive husband. Mm -hmm. He is not a Toastmaster and thank God he is not. <laughs> but uh, whenever I'm traveling, he's there to take care of the kids. He has never complained. He has never said anything. He has always supported. So that is a big thing uh, for a married woman. Either you need to have a supportive husband or you should not have a husband at all. Mm. Otherwise, it's not possible. Preach. <laughs> Preach, Nisha. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> oh, okay. So thank you for sharing your practices. Yes. Organization uh, makes my day because I have a full-time job with the um, the government yeah. and, and everything that I do is just on my spare time. So if I'm not organized, none of it is happening. So definitely yeah. it's doable. And what is the next step for Nisha Shabram, if I may ask? Uh, again, competition will be there next year. Uh, but other than that, I have a startup. I have this, um, um, you know, we are developing an AI assisted application. So I would be launching it in December yeah. and set Setting up a business in Qatar is not easy for an expatriate like me. I need a lot of support. So we are still struggling with getting a sponsor and getting funds to establish the company. But I know it will be done. It will take time, but it will be done. So, yes, my next step would be to establish myself as an entrepreneur in Qatar. Maybe you will see me in Forbes 500 also. Who knows? Yes, yes <laughs> absolutely. I, I see that happening. I could see it already, the headlines. <laughs> yeah, great. And Thank finally, you. yes, uh, if someone in the audience would like to know more about you or would like to book you to inspire and motivate their audience, how could they reach you? Um, I can give you my email ID. Mm -hmm. You can mention that email ID or my WhatsApp number. Mm -hmm. uh, I will be available on any of these things, email or WhatsApp. Yep. They can always contact. Perfect. Or on LinkedIn. Perfect. Nisha, this has been such a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Thank you for being so candid and sharing all those um, nuggets of gold, actually, diamonds with us. And I'd love to just share a few of my main takeaways. My friend, if you plan to compete, whether you are you just joined the organization or you've been a Toastmasters for many years, Get ready as soon as the competition is over. So like now, get started for next year. Do not wait two weeks before to contact a speaking coach at that moment. Do it now. <laughs> Number two, you can keep a speech very simple. It does not have to be very complicated. Just look at your day-to-day -day life and find the stories there. Oh, I love that one. Do not listen to naysayers. When people start discouraging you, bringing you down, you know, you can do it. Don't listen to them. Just keep following your plans, basically. Cut out the negative people or people who are not aligned with your goals because it will slow you down. And for your speech as well, you uh, it's good to have more humor to connect with your audience. Okay, this is, my, I think, my favorite one. Do not underestimate your fellow contestants. 
Okay, and do not overestimate yourself, no matter how far you've made it. And life will always have struggles. When you have a problem, just look at it head on, write it down and write options and find the best one to um, come out of it. And finally, if you're ha you're overwhelmed, you have a lot of things on your plate, get organized and stick to your schedule. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Nisha, before we part? I want to tell you something. I have always, you know, I think after Tennessee or even before that, I, I just don't remember. I've always followed your pages, Tricia. Okay. I've always, and I kept on seeing that you are inviting guests and, you know, interviewing them. And I always ask, when is Patricia going to call me? When is Patricia going to call me? And it's a serious, seriously, I'm telling you. So I always used to watch these um, pages and I always used to ask myself. So probably I have, you know, I, I believe in this law of attraction. So I have attracted this, manifested, and manifested this dream into reality. So thank you so much, Patricia, for inviting me. It's really, really, really an honor for me because this is something that I have been seeing all the time and asking myself when. So today it happened. So thank you so oh, much. Thank you, Nisha. Um, yes, I, I love that you're saying this. And to be honest, I want since Tennessee, I wanted to invite you, I have to say. But uh, because I, I love you in, in Tennessee and there's so many, you know, you see them right on social media. You see there's so many people. I want to I would like to interview everybody, but I have a full time government job. Like it's a very big pro project. So everything I do is on my private time and, and I'm alone. Right. So I have to do all that. It's like six to eight hours of my life on interview. So I have to I have no choice but to, um, limit them. Otherwise, I would not take care of my family. But yes, I've been wanting to. This is something I've been wanting to do since last year. I just didn't have capacity. But now I don't have more capacity, but I, I was so amazed by you in the Bahamas. I said, you know, but I need to reach out to Nisha. <laughs> and I'm so happy you said yes. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And you're just such a powerful lady. I call it, you're a powerful lady. You know, I'm like, woo, such a strong lady. And for me, I was raised by a strong woman and I could recognize one when I see one. So thank you for this. And I'm Understood. cheering for you. I'm going to keep cheering for you next year and the next year and the next year. <laughs> I don't care how long it takes you, but you have a cheerleader for life. My dear friend, thank you so much for watching until the end. And I hope you have loved every bit of what Nisha shared with us today. And I will leave you with this. The power of your voice can change the world. Find it and use it. See you in the next video. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Nisha.